Today we are going to look at how higher civilizations reportedly power their worlds without the use of electricity. Some have discussed the use of frill energy and sacred geometry for power instead of alternating current, as we do. We will focus on ideas that connect sacred geometry, energy systems, and futuristic power concepts. Then we will look at a real frill energy generator that Dan Willis and his team is working on. There's a link in the description for those who'd like to learn more. He's got a great website with very detailed information that is above the level of this video. Frill energy is the universal life force present throughout the universe, even in the void of space, used to power advanced extraterrestrial technologies. Think about this for one second. We walk around in a machine that manipulates energy and uses it for its power. This invisible force powers the many biological processes that are on autopilot as we go about our lives. You don't have to plug yourself into a wall socket, but the machine is connected to the infinite power of the universe. It truly is amazing to think of the design of our bodies. We also know that everything is energy at its core, regardless of what it looks like, smells like, or feels like. Frill is the ubiquitous energy source that advanced civilizations harness for all their technological needs, from propulsion to infrastructure. Frill is a limitless, clean energy source that could theoretically power entire planets if tapped efficiently. It's not tied to specific physical mechanisms, but is linked to consciousness or vibrational energy, suggesting a connection to metaphysical frameworks like sacred geometry. This is why you are hearing more about raising our vibration so much. We can't ignore it and sit back and wait for everything to be given to us. We are the creators, and understanding this is the way that we will move into the future of prosperity. Apparently, the interplay of sacred geometry and frill is the secret that we aren't ready for yet, but we are learning. To be clear, sacred geometry refers to universal patterns, shapes, and mathematical ratios, such as the golden ratio, platonic solids, and the flower of life, which underpin the structure of the cosmos and influence energy flow. In futuristic energy systems, Sacred geometry is believed to optimize energy generation, transmission, and storage by aligning technology with these natural patterns. Let's talk about a few key concepts for understanding this interplay between atoms and mathematics. First is shape-based energy or shape waves. Research into shape waves as explored by French radius thesists Chomery and Belizal, suggests that geometric shapes emit subtle energies independent of their size, influenced by their form and orientation. For example, spheres and pyramids are thought to emit specific vibrational frequencies that could be harnessed. A sphere's centrifugal radiation or a pyramid's alignment with cardinal directions is used to amplify or focus energy in futuristic systems. That's the secret of why the ancients used pyramids as tombs. Remember that energy can never be destroyed according to the first law of physics, known as the law of energy conservation. Now that we understand that all of this energy is floating all around and through us, Let's further explore a some hypotheses for how energy and the orientation of atomic particles could power worlds. Ley lines and planetary grids are concepts describing an invisible network of energetic pathways that crisscross the Earth, linking ancient sacred sites, natural landmarks, and power points. Many traditions hold that ley lines are streams of subtle energy that form a global matrix, sometimes called the planetary grid, which shapes the flow of life force around the planet. Ancient structures such as Stonehenge, the Pyramids of Giza, and Machu Picchu are often cited as being positioned along these lines, 
suggesting that past civilizations intentionally aligned monuments with Earth's energetic currents. The planetary grid is thought to resemble a geometric web encircling the globe, like a crystalline lattice, through which spiritual, magnetic, and cosmic energies move, thereby influencing both nature and human consciousness. Advanced civilizations could tap these grids to power planetary systems, using vortex points for energy amplification. This aligns with ancient practices of building structures at energy nodes, suggesting a futuristic rediscovery of such knowledge. Then there are platonic solids and resonance. The platonic solids, such as the tetrahedron, cube, and other geometric patterns, are believed to resonate with specific frequencies, potentially acting as energy conductors or amplifiers. For instance, Metatron's cube is a complex geometric figure, which is seen as a blueprint for energy flow in mystical traditions, which could inspire futuristic energy devices designed to mimic these patterns. Nothing is left up to chance in the design of the universe, and the ancients knew this, but somehow this knowledge has been lost. Our destiny is to advance as a civilization to understand and learn to live in harmony with the great design. We as humans think we know so much, but the fact is that the very consciousness that feeds our ego also hides the truth or awareness of higher consciousness. Futuristic worlds definitely use frill-like energy and sacred geometry to power their worlds. The challenge is to figure out how, and this will not be told to us until we have evolved to a higher level of consciousness. This is why you are hearing about this 5D frequency. Apparently, 5D consciousness is the minimum level of evolution to enter into the universe of quantum technologies. Geometric energy generators would be devices shaped like platonic solids or pyramids, which are designed to capture ambient universal energy or frill by resonating with cosmic frequencies. For example, a spherical generator might concentrate energy at its center, as described in radiesthetic studies, to power cities or spacecraft. The Flower of Life Pattern with its overlapping circles, could inspire grid-like energy networks that distribute power efficiently across a planet, mimicking natural harmonic systems. Leyline power stations could be used by advanced civilizations to build power plants at vortex points, such as the Bermuda Triangle or Easter Island, to harness Earth's natural electromagnetic or subtle energies. These stations could use sacred geometry to align with ley lines, amplifying energy output for planetary use. Zero-point energy, also known as vacuum energy because it is actually a quantum concept that involves energy in a vacuum, and it's believed to be a limitless power source. There are patents on zero-point energy generators, and even NASA is working on it so geometry could guide the design of devices to capture this energy, using shapes like the torus or dodecahedron to stabilize or channel quantum fluctuations. While no large-scale generators are available, the integration of zero-point energy with geometric principles is kind of a staple of quantum-inspired energy systems. So, since frill is considered a universal life force, future, worlds will likely use geometrically optimized structures, like buildings based on the golden ratio, to channel this energy for propulsion, communication, or even environmental control. Elena Danen has shared that all of the extraterrestrial technology is powered by what they call frill, which exists even in the void of space. They can harvest it and store it in a special type of crystals, unknown to Earth, and use it to power everything. This is our future as we ascend into tomorrow. Sacred geometry is studied in various contexts, 
like at the Vesica Institute or in radiesthetic experiments, and zero-point energy is explored in theoretical physics. While mainstream sources will tell you that integrating these mystical concepts with physics, like quantum or electromagnetic theories, remains speculative, it is undenied that things like fractals and the Fibonacci sequence in nature do suggest possible connections, but when could we ever rely on the mainstream narrative? There is a team working on energy generation from Frill with scientists from the U.S. and France. My friend Dan Willis is a core technical leader and steward of the Frill Generator Project as he carries forward the legacy of Dr. Marcel Vogel. It's my understanding that the team uses a Vogel cut quartz crystal, dual copper and silver coils and a pulse generator to create torsion fields emitting frill. Dan's work is so far above my expertise, but I felt it's important to understand that there are independent research teams that are actually working with off-planet beings to bring this technology to us. But it seems clear that we must learn, rather than being spoon-fed, these technologies and some secrets remain until we are ready for them. It's clear that there are boundaries of what we are allowed to know and that we must learn to walk before we can run. If you are interested in delving deeper into the mechanics and progress of this project, I encourage you to visit the extensive website which will be linked in the description. Lastly, I want to share with you some wisdom from Jen Han Eredion, who is the Pleiadian ET guiding Dan in this amazing adventure. So let me share a little wisdom from Jen Han that will help you understand how important and intricately connected our consciousness is to our evolution. This is a direct excerpt from Jen Han. The full communication log will be linked in the description, but listen carefully. Breath carries memories and thoughts. It also carries the energy of a being, not only the encoding of its vehicle DNA, but as well the encoding of the soul. When you project breath, you also project by superimposing a parcel of the soul being, hence a fragment of one's consciousness. The energy force that is a living manifestation of source is being impregnated inside the crystal. But beware, the crystal must be empty. This means no residual emotional imprint, parasiting, or charge. The crystal must be pure and clear from any form of energy, or consciousness even. I wouldn't say that at this stage, the crystal is really empty because it carries its frequency imprint, but I mean empty from anything that is not the original frequency signature of the crystal. In order to perform this action, embedding a fractal of your consciousness in a dynamic projection into the crystal. There are methods of purification I can tell about. The best is to run the crystal through a sound scan. You need instruments that create a high frequency sound or trained persons can clear a crystal with their own consciousness. These individuals have reached a clear state of mind. I will link a video about amplifying our healing by projecting our thought into crystal at the end. I understand how badly some of you want these amazing technologies dropped in our laps, but I simply don't think it's going to happen like that. The learning is the evolution and integral to the process. The instructions by Jen Han tell us that when working with crystals, this imprint can only be accomplished when the crystal is clear. This clearing can be done with high frequency, but we must also consider that our lower frequencies can potentially contaminate or drain the crystal. Because crystals, especially clear quartz, are highly sensitive to the vibrations, frequencies, and even the conscious intent of the person working with them. Dr. Vogel specifically warned that negative thoughts, fear, or low emotional states could contaminate a crystal by embedding chaotic disruptive patterns into it. Can you understand the challenge working with these technologies? For such primitive beings as ourselves, we are a civilization where so many attempt to take the purity from our most innocent, and integrity has become rare on Terra, 
but there are beacons when we look for them. I pray that our civilization can return from the depths to which we have fallen. This becomes even more personal when we apply it to the capture of energy for healing purposes and why it's so important to nurture the state of our frequency. I can't promise miracles, but I do promise you that if you can manage to consistently raise your emotional frequency, your life will change for the better. It's my fervent belief that our world will someday be powered by harnessing a universal life force like Frill through sacred geometry and inspired technologies. Can crystals, geometric generators, ley line power stations, or maybe even zero-point energy devices shaped like platonic solids be the key to our energy crisis? What's even more fascinating to me is the notion that our future cities could utilize crystal structures and buildings to harness pure, clean, and healing frill energy being emitted into our environment rather than harmful radiation that can make us sick. Could it be that the very geometry of the universe holds the answer to powering our world? If crystal structures and sacred designs can channel frill, then perhaps the future of energy isn't in burning fuel, but in aligning with the life force that already surrounds us. Visualize cities glowing with clean, limitless power, where technology and nature harmonize, and every home is sustained by this universal energy. The question is, are we ready to do the inner work of vibrational evolution needed to align ourselves with this technology? We are going to close this with a quote from Dr. Vogel. The lattice of a crystal is a map of energy. Its geometry speaks the language of creation.